listen, I'm not your girlfriend. And I'm not your mother. But you'd better finish that pickle, or else I'm stealing it. Me? I'm a waitress, dummy. Waitresses have to be whatever people want them to be. Yeah, but not today. Don't worry. Thursday's my day off. That's okay. It's nice to sit on the other side of the counter for a change and see how the other half lives. This music, isn't it dreamy? Hmm, I can tell we have some things in common. We both have to live by our wits. Hitchhiking isn't an easy trade. Waiting tables isn't either. I'll show you what I mean. Corned beef hash with three eggs over easy, whole wheat toast and hash browns. Two eggs scrambled with bacon, sausage, English muffin, and french fries with mayo instead of ketchup. Three eggs over easy with well done bacon and a side salad. Hold the toast. Greek omelet with well done hash browns and white toast. A short stack of blueberry pancakes, coffees all around, and one Diet Coke. So, how many orders of toast were there? Okay, here it is. Corned beef hash with three eggs over easy, whole wheat toast and hash browns. Two eggs scrambled with bacon, sausage, English muffin and french fries with mayo instead of ketchup. Three eggs over easy with well done bacon and a side salad. Hold the toast. Greek omelet with well done hash browns and white toast. A short stack of blueberry pancakes, coffees all around and one Diet Coke. So, how many orders of toast? Nope, two. Three if you count the English muffin. I figure there's an art to hitching a ride. You have to be able to read people very quickly. Waiting tables is no different. You get to know what people want before they know what they want. It's a sixth sense. When I picked you up, with you, it was easy. Your mind is an open book. Seeing you wandering through that street in the suburbs, clutching that strange blue box like a talisman. I could see that you needed a good rest, a good meal, and a dose of friendly advice from someone who's looking out for you. It's good you managed to lose Hops back there. Let me guess, did he try to make you promise to meet him again?
Have a look. You might find it interesting. Weird, right? Gets weirder though. Check out the back. Seems like some kind of rendezvous. I mean, I figure that's not your card. Beats me. I just work here. Sorry, Copernicus. I've helped you all I can this time. Sure, I can drop you off there once we get out of here. <clears throat> Pass me the menu, will you? I want to see if they have the seasonal milkshakes in yet. Aw, look at that. That. It's like a little map of your adventures. How convenient. Even your gas station is there. Did you notice? It's a typical sign, you know. Of a lucid dream. Random happenstance. Strange coincidence. This might be a good time to test if you have superhuman strength or can fly or something. I think I'll have peppermint mocha or vanilla caramel. Sure. I mean, come on. Raisin farmer? There's no such thing. Grapes have farmers. Raisins are dried grapes. End of story. Jeez, where's the waitress anyway? I'd kill for a shake right now. Well, things become real when we invest meaning in them. When we make them real. It's not a theory. There's a poem about this. A guy is having an argument with his friend. He's freaking out because the meaning of every word, everything, every idea seems to be falling apart. After a while, I understood that talking this way, everything dissolves. Justice, pine, hair, woman, you, and I. Exactly. Booth, menu, you, I, Mustard. 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 It all starts to dissolve. It's my day off reading. Well, he remembers this lover he had, and that helps him get his head screwed on straight again. Well, in a sense, it's more that he thinks back to what it was like when they were together, and the different memories come together and leave him with a sense of specificity, that things are real and not just a big pile of words and concepts and stuff that fall apart the moment you try to squeeze them tight. He thinks back to when he was a boy and remembers this river where he would try to catch the little orange silverfish called pumpkin seed. That's nice, right? Feels good to say. Pumpkin seed. Makes things feel more real. Look at me. Don't forget me. See me for who I am. Pumpkin seed. It's the curse of the diner waitress. Less a real person and more a blank screen. Oh yeah, plenty of that. But also just these cliches people have with diners. Are you sure about that? Or is that just what you want me to be? You don't seem to realize that you're the one pulling the strings in here. Well, everyone has an agenda. People think they come to a diner for food, but they're really looking for something much more profound. They want something, and at the end, they settle up. You bring the bill, and they have the chance to make good again. Everybody wants to be forgiven. It's a simple transaction. You're no different. 
Only when you're as good at it as I am. In this job, you work as a professional shapeshifter. After a while, you can't even recognize yourself in the mirror anymore. You start to realize that nobody is what they seem. Not you, especially not them. This whole modern problem of people not really being present, it's everywhere. And technology only makes it worse. Once the robot doubles started showing up, that was the tipping point. Robot doubles. The first models were so expensive, only Silicon Valley types could afford them, like electric cars. But pretty soon, it got to the point where basically anybody could afford a robot double of themselves. You could pick one up at Walmart, one aisle over from the toilet paper and the firearms. Pretty much anything you want, but there's where you have to be careful. It acts like you, but it only performs at about 70% of your capabilities. It's you, after a bunch of drinks. So, if you're smart, you only trust it to do really simple things for you. Go to the post office, jury duty, fill in for you at your boring job, but... People are lazy. They grow dependent on their robos, use them for all kinds of things they shouldn't, making complex calculations, blowing up boulders. People send their robos off to be with their wives, their families, while carrying on affairs. Check it out. Imagine you and I are in a relationship. Then you notice I'm acting a little slow. My eyes aren't focusing quite right. Like this. Look. See it? You just need more practice. Then you'd realize that I just stuck you with a pile of bolts for the evening. Right, so here we are. Two dummies out on a date together. Would your robo be smart enough to know that I'd sent mine? Or would they keep it a secret between themselves? All kinds of ethical issues, right? I don't know. I know you're trying to make your eyebrows move weirdly just to mess with me. Did someone stand me up with a robo? No, not exactly. It's more about this thing that happened to me at work once. Not here, dummy. In my former life as a flight attendant. Grab that thing and pull up a chair. I'll tell you all about it. Come on, we don't have all day. Grab that thing there and I'll fill you in. You feel like a sack of bolts yourself doing these safety demonstrations. People are zoning out, staring at their phones like the blockheads in here, or else just leering at you like you're the first woman they've ever seen wearing a uniform but you start getting good at spotting the doubles. They're often the only ones paying attention, staring at you with those not quite human eyes of theirs. Technically, no, they're not supposed to be there. But like I said, people bend the rules and security rarely checks. They're fine on the runway, perfectly docile. But something goes wrong at altitude something about the navigation system. The FAA wanted to study it, but the study got shut down because you're not supposed to have them on aircrafts in the first place. So yeah, I learned to spot them right away. It becomes a job requirement, a matter of survival. Here, try your luck. Have a look at the table. So, one mustard, fine. Three mustards, not so fine. The one on the left is the real one. See if you can track it. Keep your eyes on the prize. 10 will get you 30. Uh-oh, you just accused Mr. Corporate Entitlement of being a robot. Unfortunately, it's really him. That's going to cost you one complimentary business class upgrade. Want to play again? Uh-oh, another irate customer. Look who you pissed off this time. You'll get it this time, okay? Very 
good. You have successfully enforced airline regulations. Want to play again? So, where was I? Pick that up again and I'll show you what happened next. One time, we were doing a flight into Galveston and we had a sudden drop of cabin pressure about a hundred miles from our destination. No, but imagine this. Everyone's freaking out. I'm trying to help a girl with her arm in a cast to get her oxygen mask over her head. Suddenly, I'm aware of this Frankenstein monster lurching towards me. The Robos, they're like an army of the undead. People are screaming and we're huddled together like a band of villagers with pitchforks to fight these things. Luckily, they started fritzing out on their own, like Hal in 2001 when his brain starts melting. Let me tell you, as soon as we got over water, adios, out you go, robos, threw them right out of the cabin doors. Throwing the robos off the plane? No, you're right, that didn't actually happen. You can't just open the hatch door like that. But it's a nice image, right? I like to think of it sometimes when I'm lying in bed trying to sleep. Kind of. You need practice to be able to spot them. They're everywhere these days. I can see one in this diner right now, in fact. Can you find it? That's right, the king. Can you believe it? God, I miss the king. They say that it was the first robot double prototype ever made. He actually sent it off to act in some of those cheese ball movie roles he had. That's why they were so bad. Am I? Says the guy who called his own girlfriend a robot. I seem to recall you standing right there, complaining, it's like eating lunch with an automaton. You really don't remember anything? What you were fighting about? What happened next? Well, I've got a little game that might help you remember. It's kind of like a telephone seance. Ready? <clears throat> Hello? Is that you? This is your girlfriend. Yes, it's me. I'm calling from beyond the grave. So, who are you with right now? Am I interrupting you? Why'd you bring me back here of all places? Of all the restaurants we've been to? Couldn't you have summoned me to that place with the sour cream pierogi? See, I told you this is a good game. Okay, so, I'm your girlfriend. Somehow, I'm not with you now, and you don't know why, except I am with you right now. That pretty much sum it up? No, no, this is my game. I get to ask the questions first. What's with this gas station you're trying to get to? What are you hoping to find there? We need to get gas in a sec. Hey, stop it! It's like we spend one year falling in love and the next four breaking up, right? What took so long? Were you just afraid of being alone? Or maybe you didn't want to be the guilty one, the one who blows things up and hurts me. Were you waiting for permission from me to end it? Waiting for me to give you... Exactly. Waiting for an excuse. What? Right. That's why you stuck around. Fear. You didn't want to break anything. You couldn't get over the idea that this great future we were supposed to have could just be wiped out. The beacon we'd always talked about, our light in the bottle, gone. You left it to me. Put it on me to do what needed doing. Well, I finally gave you the sign you were looking for, right over at that counter there. <clears throat> 
You guys need anything else or you're okay for now? We're fine, thanks. You do anything to make it different, right? To fix things. I can take you to that gas station. And I can be her for you. Together, we'll open the box. You can make it happen. You can make it real. What do you say? Miss the old times? Let me be her. Okay, your choice. Now it's your turn. You can ask me one question, whatever you want. The man on the phone. Yes, the one I was texting when we were eating lunch. The man with many eyes. Yes, he has ten eyes, like this. No, no, he wears them around his wrist, like a bracelet. Even while he sleeps, a few of them keep watch, their eyes open. He also wears an orange vest. Find the man with many eyes, and his friend, the man with mirror eyes. They're the ones who did this to me. Close your eyes. Hey, where'd you go? It's like you went somewhere else there, having some irresistible dream. Good for you. Reality is always the best policy. Speaking of reality, the check has arrived. Works for me. What's the sudden rush? Are you sure? If you're lucky, maybe she hasn't even gotten to the gas station yet. Well, the card has Thursday 4 p.m. written on it, right? That was two days ago. And need I remind you that today is... Yeah. If we leave now, we can beat her there by nearly an hour and find out who's waiting for her. Well, that's easy. If I'm made up to look like her, he'll give himself away as soon as we arrive. I have a few wigs in the car. Like I told you, I'm an expert shapeshifter. Come on. Time to be forgiven. And time to hit the road. Time to pay the check so we can get out of here. This thing about robots is chilling. It says that 60% of the workforce won't have a job in 20 years. Hmm. Hey, can you put down your phone for three seconds? I'm trying to have a real human connection with you and you're so tuned out. It's like I'm eating with a robot. I'm sorry, I know. We need to get gas in a sec. You can tell me about it while we're in the car. Would you put that thing away? Hey, stop it. Come on, let go. Who is that? Who are you writing to? God, keep your voice down. Look, I've been driving for ages. I just need to space out a little. A little? It's like you're a million miles away. Can you just give me a break, please? We were just taking a break, remember? Now we're back together, but I feel this is the last place in the world you want to be. Well, that's what I'd call a self-fulfilling prophecy. Ain't love grand. Come on, let's get out of here. How do I look? Good. I'm a very apt pupil. A very apt pupil. Here, take my phone. Call for help the moment something looks fishy. I did, yes. Right, it was her. Yes, and? Listen, there's some... 
There's something at the end of this road that you don't want to find. You do, and you don't. If you only wanted to find it, there wouldn't be all this conflict. It's hardly been a smooth ride, has it? I'm just saying, there are two sides to every story, right? The argument back at the diner, maybe there was something missing for her. Something missing between the two of you. Have you stopped to think for a moment about why you keep finding these photographs? Why they are so important to you? Your photos. They're a way of capturing reality, right? They're objective, but they're also you. They tell the story you want them to tell. That camera of yours, it's a weapon too. Take a photo of me and in the photo I'll never change. I'll never grow away from you. So what did you learn back there from your photo? Oh? Oh, you have my phone. Why don't you call it then? Hmm. And you think he's also this man with all the... All the eyes? Hey, you said he has ten of them, right? Have another look at that card. Ten little eyes. See him? Freaky, right?